So, we now want to uh, st sort of state the, 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 the problem statement and say is there something that we can do more than this. And uh, now you may wonder why are we asking such a question. Uh, the question is uh, comes from the following observation. Here is the SNR conditions. This is gamma 1, gamma 2, dot 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 gamma j. <coughs> okay. And each of them has got their own probabilities. Let us uh, take the discrete channel. What are we saying is the transmitted uh, uh, power for each of these dot 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 all of them are transmitted the same power that is we did not change it we did not touch the transmit power right because all you said was the transmit power you transmitted at some power the signal fluctuated because of the channel conditions noise power remained constant. So, therefore, this is the transmitted power P s. Now, does it have to be constant? Now, is there any uh, any intuition that says well you know what uh, maybe I should do something a little bit differently. So, for example, if the channel condition is not so good maybe I boost the power right. So, maybe uh, I can look at a scenario where I do red here and something here. Maybe I try to equalize the channel where SNR is not so good I try to do that or I may do something counter, little counterintuitive when the channel is bad reduce the power why waste time uh, why waste power on a bad channel and transmit it uh, with more power. So, depends on which way you want to do it. So, one thing that we have not yet looked at is the power allocation. So, one option is to keep P s fixed the other option is uh, can we vary P s and what should be the criteria something should be uh, uh, pro it should be somehow linked to the SNR can we vary, but the question is then what is the optimum mapping that is a very important question. Can we vary the power allocation ok. This is an important question because it leads us to the basically we are building our way towards OFDM. So, this is an important question that arises. So, now what do we say for each gamma i I am going to apply a transmit power which is proportional to p of gamma i. I have not defined the function yet it is p of gamma i ok. But I have to assign these powers such that very important condition summation p of gamma i f gamma of gamma i is less than or equal to p s. Am I right? I have, uh, on average, I have to keep the P s constant. I cannot. I mean, I I, I cannot do some uh, allocation which suddenly looks like I have transmitted more than P s. On average, I have to do P s. Now, quick sanity check: if I transmit the same power level for all gamma i's, P of gamma i is equal to some uh, constant for all for all i. Then notice that uh, that will come out, and you'll you'll find that. Uh, p of gamma i equal to p s for all i that is that is a sanity check. So, that is so what you are saying is instead of assigning constant power can I do some uh, differential uh, power allocation. So, this is a very very important uh, observation and a question uh, you know why do we have to do constant power allocation maybe it is better for us to do something uh, something or, or, or different. So, here is here is now the the, the problem formulation the formulation of the capacity. How do we now define uh, formulation of the capacity calculation? Capacity calculation. So, we have a power constraint ok let us it is usually called the average power constraint and the average power constraint says that uh, we have to allocate power in such a way that uh, the uh, the integral 0 to infinity p of gamma f gamma of gamma should be less than or equal to p s ok. p s or since we are talking about calling it average power let us also call it p bar ok. So, this can also be rewritten in a very useful way which is 0 to infinity p of gamma by p bar 
f gamma of gamma less than or equal to 1. Now let me tell you why this is a, a preferred model. What are the units of this? It is dimensionless, right. So it is some number if you did not have any power allocation what will that be equal to 1 because uh, p gamma will be the same as p bar. But now what will it be if you want to boost it up it will be 1.1. If, it, if you want to uh, reduce the power it will be 0.8. So basically it is some number in the range 0 to 1 maybe slightly above 1 for some cases but it is a it is a real number which is a positive real number which is in that range. So this is a, uh, a very useful form uh, useful form for us to uh, to, vi to visualize and to keep. So the, uh, the, the capacity cal calculation or the capacity formulation uh, is, is uh, given in this fashion. So I would like to compute the ergodic capacity under the condition of the uh, uh, capacity cal calculation being the maximum. So I want to maximize the ergodic capacity. So which means I am it is a maximization problem under the power constraint basically it will be the power allocation p of gamma for the different SNRs such that the power constraint is satisfied average power constraint let me just write it down 0 to infinity p of gamma f gamma of gamma d gamma less than or equal to p or I am going to write it in the normalized form this divided by p bar less than or equal to 1. You can take it equal to 1 basically if you want to uh, maximize it. Okay. Now th this is the constraint what am I optimizing? I am optimizing b times integral 0 to infinity logarithm base 2 1 plus notice I have to write down SNR. This is the SNR without modification this is what the channel gave you but you are going to modify it by the following term which is p gamma by p bar. It is a dimensionless quantity it either boosts the SNR or reduces it by tampering with the transmit power signal. So this is a very very important step this times uh, uh, basically uh, f gamma of gamma d gamma okay. So I just want to pause for a moment just to make sure that you are comfortable with the statement of the problem. I am introducing the flexibility to allocate power based on the SNR. I cannot do it arbitrarily I must do it subject to a average power constraint. I want to interpret it as a dimensionless quantity which either improves or increases the transmit power or, or reduces. So basically it is a dimensionless quantity p of gamma by p bar. How does it affect the capacity it now becomes logarithm of 1 plus gamma p gamma by p bar. This, gamma, uh, this this uh, term can either be greater than 1 less than 1 and that will accordingly uh, affect. So under this condition I want to know what is the best that I can achieve. So what am I optimizing over I am optimizing over all possible power allocations okay and um, this is this is a uh, detailed derivation that is given to us in, uh, in uh, Goldsmith but I would like to just give you the highlights of it. So it is it is actually framed as a Lagrangian problem where we say that uh, we would now like to define an objective function. The ob objective function is j the variables that I am optimizing over is the power allocation p of gamma so it is actually a function. This is given by the, the capacity expression b times 0 to infinity logarithm base 2 1 plus gamma p gamma by p bar f gamma of gamma d gamma subject to the constraint the, the average power constraint minus lambda times integral 0 to infinity p of gamma by p bar f gamma of gamma d gamma that is it okay. So this is the uh, a minus 1. So uh, I need to put a bracket around this okay. So this is my uh, objective function. So uh, if you could just uh, quickly um, in, in the uh, afternoon or whenever you get a chance to look at this basically uh, we will now differentiate a typical Lagrangian type optimization differentiate the objective function with respect to the power allocation function. 
okay. So, which means that you, you will have to differentiate uh, the uh, objective function wherever p of gamma is present. Uh, you, what I su suggest is uh, uh, take a look at it, but let me just give you the final expression. Uh, logarithm base 2 is difficult for us to opt, uh, differentiate. So, basically we will write log base 2 as log natural logarithm of something divided by ln base 2. Okay, so, basically we will use that. So, it becomes b by ln 2 that is just the I am taking out the making it a um, natural logarithm. So, then what we are defined with is uh, you will have to differentiate the integrand. So, it will be integral 0 to infinity the derivative of ln of 1 plus gamma which will come out to be 1 over gamma p gamma by p bar differentiate the uh, the uh, argument of the logarithmic function. So, uh, uh, you are differentiating with respect to p gamma. So, it basically it will be gamma by p bar okay. and the other term comes out to be uh, you differentiate with respect to uh, uh, p of gamma uh, it comes out to be uh, lambda uh, then what you do is uh, uh, basically this times f gamma of gamma I am basically combining the two terms. Uh, f gamma of gamma uh, d gamma equal to 0. Okay. So, basically uh, write this take this p bar to the other side. Okay. So, basically it will be integral of p gamma f gamma of gamma d gamma minus p bar. So, uh, when I differentiate I will be left with only this this term. Okay. So, uh, this integrand is a strictly uh, a positive quantity it is 1 plus something right logarithm of 1 plus something means uh, your uh, it is a positive quantity. So, therefore, uh, the condition is that uh, if this has to go to 0 then this integrand has to go to be had to be 0. I am sorry that is what I, I, I said I, I took the p bar to the right hand side right. So, it will be uh, so when I differentiate p bar is treated as a constant. Wait, let me just rewrite that in case this is causing confusion minus p bar right. So, when I differentiate with respect to p of gamma that that term goes off right that that does does not contribute anything okay. So, I am sorry common bandwidth yeah. Um, let me let me let me put it inside let me put let me put that inside. Uh, okay 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 I, I, I need to be a little bit careful. So, I need to let me keep this let me let me put the b by lambda 2 inside that is that is the easiest that is correct. So, let me put the b by lambda 2 inside. Right? Is that okay? Okay. So uh, let, let me just uh, uh, leave you with the thought that uh, this is this is the uh, solution of the uh, Lagrangian. We're just basically one step away. Let me just write it down and then uh, pick it up from here in the next uh, next class. So b times ln two gamma by p bar divided by one plus gamma p gamma by p bar should be equal to lambda okay. So, rewrite this equation uh, did I make a mistake no this is correct okay. So, uh, 1 plus gamma p gamma by p bar uh, cross multiplying uh, this comes out to be b by ln 2 gamma by p p bar into 1 over lambda divide throughout by gamma. So, then what we get is this is a very very uh, important result p of gamma divided by p bar that is my power allocation that the, those is actually comes out to be 1 over gamma naught by 1 over gamma where gamma naught 1 over gamma naught has been defined as the following. 1 1 over gamma naught has been defined as b divided by ln 2 p bar lambda.
Now at the end of the day B is a constant bandwidth, ln2 is a constant, P bar is your uh, uh, power uh, uh, average power constraint that is a constant, lambda is a Lagrangian. So this is actually a constant that is why we have written it as, as this. So the power allocation is actually given by 1 over gamma naught minus 1 over gamma okay. Now how do we interpret this? is the crux of why OFDM was even born. So basically what we have done so far is uh, we have gotten a channel where there is variations. We now need to find out what is the best I can achieve in terms of ergodic capacity. One way was to al allocate equal power, the other way was to uh, allocate differential power with an average power constraint. We went through the formulation as a Lagrangian, we showed that the power allocation, the optimum power allocation should be of the form 1 over gamma naught minus 1 over gamma. Now what is the interpretation of this and how will it affect us, how will it, uh, how will it lead to OFDM that is the important question which we will pick it up in the next lecture. Thank you.